Well, hello there. This is Music and the Word with the Circes, and my name is Cliff Circe, and it's a pleasure to come to you again this week, and we're going to be talking about something that is very, very relevant to where we're living today and what we're dealing with. My message is, I am not afraid of COVID-19. I am not afraid of of COVID-19. Now, let me make this clear as I will later in my message that I'm not saying that COVID-19 is not very real. It is. I'm not saying that it's not something to be concerned about. It certainly is. I am not saying that we should not take precautions with this terrible virus. We should. And I'm not saying that if you're a Christian and you're born again that you won't catch this virus. Or even if you do that you won't die. Not making those statements at all. But I'm saying that I'm not going to be afraid of that. I'm not going to live in fear. I know that God heals. I know that God protects us. And I know that we don't have anything to fear about because God will not allow anything to happen in our lives that is not his will for us and not something that he can bring us through. And here's the message of this beautiful song, I Have Absolute Peace. This song also drives home a beautiful truth. Sometimes we say, God, do not allow me to go through this situation. But just like Daniel in the lion's den, God does sometimes allow us to go through a situation that we wanted to avoid. But the beautiful thing about it is that we don't face it alone. God goes with us. And the beautiful message of this song is that even though he doesn't always deliver us from something, he delivers us through something. And we know we can always count on him to be able to be there with us and to bring us through the situation. And that is another reason why I will not fear. He will deliver me through. Egyptians were behind The people wondered how 
God's gonna fail us out this time. But the Lord said to Moses, raise your staff and start to move. Then the waters divided as God's children walked right through. He may not deliver you out, but he'll deliver you through. And every situation, God's gonna walk right through. All that you can do He may not deliver you out He'll deliver you through The king gave the order To bring Daniel to him Then he had him thrown Into the lion's den God could have stepped right in Stay right there and shut those lions' mouths. He may not deliver you out, but he'll deliver you through. In every situation, God's gonna walk right through with you. When it seems you reach the end, all that you can do. you enjoyed our music today we really enjoy singing and enjoy bringing that to you and i hope it brightened your day and i hope it was a blessing to you well i can't wait to get into the message for today because i'm speaking about why i am not afraid of covid19 now i'm not an idiot i'm not a stupid person and i'm not someone who says well i don't believe there's any such thing i'm not saying that at all the COVID-19 or coronavirus is something to be reckoned with. It's something that is very, very real. Clearly, there are many that have come down with it. Many have died from it. I have a family member that got it. And uh, thank God recovered and the rest of his family members in that immediate family that he lives with day after day, none of them caught it. But it could have been a completely different story. So I'm not taking lightly the fact that there is a coronavirus and that it is very, very serious. But what I'm saying is I'm not going to walk around in fear of the coronavirus. Now, I'm going to use my head. I'm in the age group that they say is at risk. And I guess I have some of the different underlying conditions that uh, would be a problem. I don't have high blood pressure and I don't have some of the things that they they describe, but I am overweight, been working on that. I lost 100 pounds, but that was before this lockdown and the shutdown happened. I hate to tell you that I've gained some of that back. But in any event, I'm working on taking it back and getting back down to where I'd lost 100 pounds, but I've got some more that I want to go. I'm not satisfied with where I'm at, even at that point. And so there are some reasons, I guess, why I would be at risk because of my age and other things. You say, well, do you wear a mask? Do you think you have to wear a mask? Well, it's mandatory in some places. Now, in the largest city around where I live, that's about 40 miles away, they just yesterday had their city council come forward and say that when you're in a public place, you now must wear a mask. So when I go to that particular city, I will have a mask on when I go because I'm going to comply with what they, what they recommend. And uh, here in our own town, in our county and in the county right next to us, Believe it or not, we only had five cases in our county and five cases in the other county and absolutely no deaths. We had not had that virus really come near us in any meaningful way in the area of Missouri in which I live, Branson West and Branson, Missouri in that area. And so we've been very, very fortunate. And uh, when we go to Walmart, 
Most of the time when I go into Walmart, I do put my mask on because there's other folks there. And if I should have caught something or was carrying something, I wouldn't want to give it to somebody else. And I certainly don't want to catch it. And But I don't do that out of fear. Uh, I've noticed that people get a little uneasy if I walk into a place without a mask on because they're concerned as to whether they're going to catch something from me. So out of respect for that, I do wear a mask from time to time. But our church building is large enough that we can have some kind of social distancing to where we're not really uh, breathing in each other's face, so to speak. But uh, in any event, uh, in our church, it's optional. If you want to wear a mask, you can. And some do and some don't. But uh, it's not been a problem in our area of the country, but it's been a serious problem in other areas of the country. But what I've noticed in talking with folks is that some are just filled with absolute fear, absolute fear because of the coronavirus, COVID-19. Why is it called 19? Well, because it broke out and became available and uh, actually emerged in the year 2019. That's why it's called COVID-19. Well, years ago, they put through a system in most of our cities, a 911 system, so that if you get in some kind of a trouble or there's an emergency, you don't have to stop and get a phone book or look on your phone to try to look up what is the police department's phone number. In a time of emergency, you don't have time to do that. Everybody knows that in most cities, if you get in trouble, you can dial 911. And by the very virtue of of your phone number and the information that they have, they will know right where you are, right where you're calling from. And so if you dial 911 and then you were to pass out, by virtue of the fact that you called that number, they would know what address to go directly to. And I found that out the hard way. My wife and I just got new iPhones and it has Siri on that. Do you know how that works? Uh, wh where you, you talk and, and, and it recognizes your voice and you can ask various things. And, and I told Anita, I said, man, if you get in trouble, you can even say, Siri, call 911. And uh, next thing I knew, my phone was dialing 911. <laughs> I found out that when you dial 911, the police come to your door. Even if you call them and say it was a mistake and you didn't mean it, they're required to come to your door anyway. And so 11 o'clock at night, there they were coming to the door. <laughs> And so I learned to be very careful around my phone, uh, very careful what I say, okay? And uh, Because Siri is always listening, all right? But uh, how interesting that we have that system. Well, do you know that God has a 911 system? I find it in Psalm 91, verse 1. In Psalm 91, verse 1 is God's great 911 system. And it says, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I like that. When we dwell, what's that mean when we live, when we abide, when we spend time in the shelter of the Most High God, we will be able to rest in the shadow of the Almighty. God casts a very, very big shadow. And it says that I can, in that shadow that he casts, I can go and I can rest. I don't have to be in fear. I don't have to be in terror. I can have rest because I'm within that area, in that environment over which he casts a shadow of protection. And it goes on, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. So you think about a fortress, you think about a great fort, you think about walled cities and great walls. He's my God in whom I trust. And then the writer of the Psalm says, surely he will save you from the fowler's snare. What's a snare? It's a trap. It's a device to try to trip you up. How many of you know that the devil is always trying to trip us up? The Bible tells us as a roaring lion, he goes about seeking who he may devour. One thing you may not realize is that the roar of a lion is terrifying. The lion is actually a terrorist in a sense because the roar of the lion is so paralyzing that it very often will take an animal and cause it to just freeze. It fills it with terror, so much so that the animal is for all practical purposes paralyzed and it can't do anything and becomes easy prey. The roar of the lion is one of the great tools and one of the great weapons that the lion has to attack his prey. And how interesting that the scripture tells us that the devil goes around as what? A roaring lion 
seeking whom he may devour. He tries to terrorize us with his roar, with his threats, with the traps that he sets, with the very weapons that he has at his disposal that he tries to bring about on us. He tries to fill us with fear. But it says, I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge, my fortress, my God, and him will I trust, and he will save us from the fowler's snare, from the trap, and from the deadly pestilence. Pestilence. We're going to talk about that in a moment. And then he says, he will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. Okay? Now, that doesn't mean that God has feathers and God has wings. The writer is clearly using a metaphor to explain to us that in the very way that a bird would take his wings and his feathers and would take the small birds and cover them and cause there to be a protection from them as they would find rest and they would find protection and they would find comfort under the wings of that great mother bird. In the very same way, God will cover us in such a way that we are calm, that we don't have to be in terror, that we don't have to be in fear. We can feel the protection of being under that covering of his, okay? And it says his faithfulness will be your shield. In the King James, it says buckler. In the NIV, it says rampart. What's a rampart? What's a buckler? Well, have you ever seen the walled cities where there's somewhat of a fortress or there's some type of a city that has walls? very often made out of concrete, the wall, the city wall, that is a rampart. That is a buckler. That is a device that keeps the enemy out. And it says that God's faithfulness is our shield. God's faithfulness is that protection, even like a wall of a city, that we know that nothing is going to penetrate, that we have that protection. And it says, you will not fear the terror of night. Tell you what, we're living in a time of terror. We're living in a time when people are afraid. What did Jesus say? Jesus said that men's hearts would fail them because of fear. What an epidemic of heart disease there is today and heart attacks that people have because of the fear that they live in, the stress. Stress is the greatest killer. And stress just causes such terror. Some people are so afraid of so many things, and I've talked with so many that are afraid of the COVID virus, and they're afraid of the unrest in our streets and of the rioting that's going on in our streets, and they're afraid of the fact that the police in many cities are not able to have their full capacity to protect us as they once have done, and so fear is just gripping people and causing them to be in great distress. But he says, you will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day. How tragic that so many people in so many of our cities in the last few weeks have been killed. Would you believe that in one of our cities this past weekend, 600% increase in shootings compared to last year at this time? 600%. When I read this about the arrows that fly by day, I got thinking of all the bullets that just go flying all over the place in our cities. How tragic that some of our young, our children were hit by those bullets. I'll tell you something that bothers me. It bothers me that with all the distress that we have over these poor, terrible, defenseless children, that have had their lives taken in such a tragic way because of the irresponsibility and recklessness of those that have just indiscriminately shot their weapons and shot their guns out without care for who those bullets would find as their target. How many more children have died in the womb by the careless and the callous decision of those that decided we want to abort this baby. As tragic as it is that these have lost their lives, these innocent children and others that have been shot, and we've had that loss of life, and people say we couldn't do anything, we couldn't control it. How many people see others put to death? Children, actual viable life that's put to death day after day after day, and that very easily could be prevented, and that very easily could be controlled. And I think that's a tragedy as well. 
But I will not fear the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. Pestilence, plague, what's it talking about? Fasten your seatbelt. Do you know another word for pestilence and plague is the word pandemic? Have you heard that word lately? This COVID-19 virus is a pandemic in that it has gone beyond the boundaries of countries and it has gone around the world. It is a pandemic, but a pestilence and a plague is also a type of pandemic. So it's talking about the very thing that we in our country are dealing with right now, as well as folks around the world. A pestilence, a plague, a pandemic. And people are saying, I'm in terror. I'm afraid. I have got no rest and no calm over this pandemic that has come about us and has come by us and that we have to deal with at this time. What a horrible thing. But he says, you will not fear the pestilence that stalks in the darkness or the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Whoa. It will not come near you. In the King James Version, it says, neither shall any plague come near to your dwelling. Do you see what that says? Wow. Though you see a thousand fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, is what we're seeing in America today, isn't it? We're seeing that so many have gotten this virus and so many have died. But it said it won't come near you. Only with your eyes. Will you see the effects of this is what he's saying. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, then no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. Wow. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling. Oh, we're going to come back to that. But if you meet those conditions, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels. God will command his angels. Wow. Concerning you, to guard you in all your ways, they will lift you up in their hands, and you will not even strike your foot against a stone, but you'll tread on the lion and the cobra. You'll trample the great lion and the serpent. He's saying you will even have authority over what the devil tries to do in your life. No weapon that's formed against you will prosper. Everything that comes against you, you will condemn. You will find that God will bring you absolute victory over what is coming against you. Hey, that sounds pretty good to me. Sounds really good. He says, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him and with long life I will satisfy him. I will show him my salvation. Now listen, it doesn't say you won't necessarily deal with any problem. For he says, I will be with him in trouble. So if any of these things that you have been fearing come upon you, Here's what you have as a promise from the Lord. In that trouble, he says, I will be with you. You will not be in that trouble by yourself. I will be with you in that trouble. Hey, look at this. I will deliver him and I will honor him. I will deliver him and I will treat him with respect. I will be a God to him that totally nourishes and takes care of him. Might you get in trouble? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I had a family member who loves the Lord and serves the Lord and is a preacher that got the COVID-19. But he recovered in short time and he's fine because God delivered him in trouble. And how wonderful that God came on the scene and took care of him and delivered him and honored him. People are saying, wow, what a wonderful thing that your God has delivered you from this. But going back to verse number nine, if you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling. Oh, there's the condition. Look at that. There's the key. 
There's the very key. If you say the Lord is my refuge, I'm not going to be okay just because of the doctor or because of some vaccination that may come along someday or because I'm wearing a mask. That's what my hope is in. And I'm going to be okay because of this or that or the other thing. No, I will be okay because it is the Lord that is my refuge. He's my protector. He is the one that is going to deliver me from this. And if you make the most high your dwelling, oh my, make him your dwelling. That's where you live. That's where you abide. That's where your attention is. That is what is front and center in your life. Jesus said that we are to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness for all things to be added unto us. And so he's saying, if you will dwell in me and make me your dwelling, all these protections are available to you. Well, there's the key. We have to dwell in him. We have to dwell in him. Wasn't it Jesus who said, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you? What's he talking about dwelling? If you dwell in me and my words dwell in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done. Wow. If you meet that condition. How about you? Where are you at today? Have you been afraid? Are you scared to death because of this virus or some other thing that's overtaken you? Are you dwelling in him? Have you understood that he's your refuge, not the doctors, though they help? All these other things are wonderful and they help. And wearing a mask and these other measures that we take, they're good. And social distancing and shelter at home, all those things have helped. But my refuge, the bottom line, it's the Lord. And I know I have to dwell in him. How about you? Let's pray. I pray for this one right now, Lord. They need to dwell in you. They need to have their habitation and their attention and their abiding in you. And we do that by turning our life over to you, by saying, Jesus, come into my life, forgive me of my sins, and I want to live for you and make you the Lord, the boss, the one that's in control of my life. And this person says that to you even now, Lord, and I pray you'll minister to them. You will cause them to have an understanding that you will take care of them. For you said, if any man come unto me, I will not in any wise cast them out. You've promised to accept any and all that would come to you, whosoever will may come. And that person says, I now want to dwell in you. I need not be afraid because of your 911 plan. And I want to come and abide with you. And these promises then become ours. Grant that prayer for this one, I pray. And I pray that the days ahead will be wonderful for them. They're accepting you into their life. And they're going to tell somebody about the decision that they've made. They're going to spend time reading your word. They're going to spend time every day praying and communicating with you as they dwell with you in the days ahead. Thank you, Lord. I believe that you're going to do that for somebody today because they've asked you and because you promised that you would. Amen. God bless you. I hope you prayed that prayer with me. I hope that you meant that. And I hope you also come back again next week. Same time, same place. We'll be here at Music and the Word with the Circes. 